In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to get a common denominator. I've actually made up a worksheet that will take you through it step by step. So you'll want to make sure that you download the worksheet that you're going to see in this video. And the link for that is in the video description that you can see below. This is the worksheet and you can see there's lots of fill in the blank stuff here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this step by step. And I guess I need to mute my phone. All right. Let's say we're going to add the fractions 3 fourths and 1 sixth. And this little box over here is for you to put either the plus or the minus. And we're going to do adding here. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to list the multiples of the denominators. What the heck do I mean by that? Well, let's see. One of our denominators is 4 and the other one is 6. And when we list the multiples, what we're doing is we're kind of multiplying. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 3 times 4 is 12 and so on. And so we're going to be listing those multiples. Uh, 28, there we go. Now, one thing I want you to understand is that we could do this into infinity. That's what those three dots there are all about. It's, um, we can list multiples forever. They go on forever, they're infinite. Now let's do six. One times six, whoops, let's try that again, shall we? Come on, let's get the eraser going. There we go. One times six is six. Two times six is 12. Three times six. Four times six. Five times six. And again, this could go on forever. Now I'm gonna show you a little trick with a calculator. Let's say you were having to work with 12s and you're not really good at your 12s. So let me show you something. If you do on a calculator, and this doesn't work on every calculator, but most of them do. I'm gonna do 12 plus 12. I'm gonna hit equals, that's 24. Now watch what happens when I keep hitting the equal. It's gonna start counting by 12s. And so this is a handy little trick that you can use. Um, if you're not too sure about your multiples. All right, let's go back to our handout. So what we've done is we have listed the multiples of four and six. These are called multiples. Let's circle the ones that they have in common. I can see that they have 12s in common, 24 is in common, and if I had kept going, I would have hit 36 up here. They would have 36 in common as well. But what we're looking for is the least common multiple. You're looking for the one that's the smallest that they have in common, and that's the 12. Now, take a look at where we're going to write that. That's our new denominator. You'll probably notice we have these kind of in gray. Come on, let's get our highlighter going here. These number ones. And the reason why I do this is I want my students to recognize that when they're multiplying here, they're only multiplying by the number one. All right, so what are we gonna do here? We're gonna focus on this one and we're gonna ask ourselves a question. Four times what equals 12? Well, hopefully you know that 4 times 3 equals 12. And we're going to put that 3 up on top as well. Now, the fraction 3 over 3 is equal to 1. So when we multiply by 1, we don't really change anything. But here, all we're doing is we're changing, uh, you could think of it as changing the slices, the size of the slices of a pizza. 3 times 3 is? nine. This is how we get our new numerator. Let's do the bottom one. One six. What number times six equals twelve? Two. So I put the other two on top. One times two is two. You want to remember that when you're adding and subtracting with fractions, 
the denominator stays the same. You simply add the numerators. Oops, I kind of gave away the answer there, didn't I? I was going to write 9 plus 2 on the top. There we go. All right, 9 plus 2 is 11. We'll just go ahead and write the answer. And there you have it. 11 twelfths. Now, this handout is really designed as, um, well, quite frankly, it's, it's kind of like training wheels. It's simply something that's going to help you to understand the process, but ultimately, you should reach a point where you don't need to use it anymore. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit, and we're going to do another problem so you can see the process again. And in fact, if you feel fairly confident as um, I write this down, you can go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own. That's always a good idea to try it first and then check your answer with me. But we're going to do um, this one, 7 eighths minus, let's do a subtraction one, minus 1 twelfth. You're going to list the multiples of both of those numbers. Is where that calculator could come in handy. 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, and what am I on? Uh, 90? No, what am I doing here? <laughs> 84, there we go. 7 times 12 is 84. And again, remember, multiples can go on forever. Circle the ones they have in common. And of course, all you have to do is circle the ones that, the lowest one that they have in common. So 24 is our common denominator. It's our least common multiple, which gets used as the lowest common denominator. Do you remember what we do next? We have to do the multiplying part to get our new numerators. It's red here. Okay, we'll do the top one first. 8 times 3 is 24. So we're going to do 7 times 3 on top. And our new numerator is 21. And then 12 times 2 is 24. 1 times 2 is 2. Now, don't forget, this is a subtraction problem. 21 minus 2 is 19. And we keep the denominator the same. And this is our answer. It does not have to be reduced. Hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully you picked up a new tip on how to use a calculator as a, a handy little tool for finding multiples.